Green Mountain Water Treatment Plant for our first public meeting for 2017 on the Reliability Improvement Project. I appreciate you all coming out and showing interest in the project. Just a brief outline of the agenda. Um, so basically we have a uh, board of director, Director Chu, in the audience tonight. Um, she'll be here, uh, she'll listen to anything you have to say in terms of concerns, uh, but no actual presentation from her tonight. The bulk of the uh, heavy lifting will be done by Amadeep Sayani. He's the Associate Electric en Electrical Engineer <coughs> Project, excuse me for my uh, convoluted uh, speaking. Uh, Mike Munson, his unit manager, is also here. He is the project manager for the um, Reliability Improvement Project. Uh, after their presentation, Steve Twitchell, the plant supervisor in the back, will we'll have a break to go out to the deck and kind of see what the uh, construction progress looks like. It's a nice opportunity that we don't afford during active construction. Um, because it is an active construction site, we don't generally have public tours, so coming here for the quarterly meeting is a, is a nice opportunity to see what's going on out there. After the tour, we'll come back in. Our uh, neighborhood liaison, Tony Mercado, will uh, tell you about what our current outreach efforts are and how you can stay up to date on the project itself. We'll then have uh, what will probably be a pretty short question and answer session. I'll, you know, Between all of us, we'll try to answer any questions you may have, and then we'll let you go home for the evening and, and enjoy the rest of the night. So, Unless there's any questions up front. Okay. Coffee and cookies. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Well, I have a question. At the last meeting, when you were explaining of all the areas that we take care of, like the perk ponds and everything. And my question is, I'm wondering why, with all the rain we're having, the perk ponds are not full. <laughs> <laughs> so, good question. Um, the levels of the perk ponds are actually controlled by our inflow to, to several different structures. So right now our perk ponds are empty because we're, we're not putting flows to the area. Um, we've got a couple different things happening, but we're trying to monitor the flows that come out of our reservoirs and uh, our dams to keep as much flow as we can. Uh, the perk ponds are for groundwater recharge, yeah. so we do make a, a point of uh, charging those up to allow the groundwater basin to prevent subsidence. We're actually projecting that we are at a pretty good level in our groundwater basin right now. Uh, we're not looking to lose any water, um, and unfortunately the rain is coming a bit quicker than we can fully store it everywhere, so you probably will see some of those perk ponds start to fill up as of late as we try to move water around. But we do have a limited ability to move water throughout the system during the wet period. A lot of that's controlled by habitat and fisheries, so we can't just send a gush of water down the stream if there's some fish habitat there. Uh, it may negatively impact the, uh, the the, the either migratory birds or the aquatic species that are there. Um, so we, we are bound by regulations during certain periods of the year. This would be one of the periods. Um, so that that is a question that we run into a lot, but you know, kind of convoluted things. Okay, well, it just seemed kind of strange if with all the rain yeah. we have. You, you would <laughs> not get full of the brim. They would naturally fill up just from just from surface water runoff. Not not quite how we do it. Yeah, so okay. folks in the Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. So without further ado, I'll, I'll have Amadeep come up and he'll do the presentation. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for attending today's meeting. Uh, so, as Ben mentioned, most of the program, I'll just go over a little more, more in detail. Uh, so, uh, in my presentation, I will be discussing the plant background and the proposed improvements, <coughs> project information and updates. Uh, then we will discuss the traffic monitoring and control. Uh, and we will uh, update you on the contractor's activities on site. Followed by that, we will have a site tour uh, at, on the construction site led by Steve Twitchell, our plant supervisor. And when we come back, uh, we will provide more information how can you stay informed about the progress of the project. And then we will be here to answer any questions that you may have. The Canada Water Treatment Plant was commissioned in 1968. And this is the only plant on the west side of the district service area. And this is uh, serving the customers for about 40, 50 years now. Uh, so the Canada Liability Project came in for several reasons. Uh, one of them was uh, the facilities and components at the plant were aging and end of their design life. Uh, we have to uh, meet the more stringent water quality requirements and definitely the, uh, improve the plant's safety and its reliability. So the improvements that are going uh, 
to be happening under this project where our plant capacity will increase from 80 million gallons per day to 100 million gallons per day. Uh, we will have state-of-the-art uh, treatment uh, processes and technology that will include raw water ozonation, uh, we will have new flocculation and plate settler flocculations, we will have dual media filtration and fluoridation will be included as part of this project. So this is uh, our project schedule. It uh, looks like we started the planning and planning phase was completed in June of two th 2012. Uh, we then started the design. Design was completed in January 2015 and construction started uh, July of 2015. Uh, since this is an operational plan and we need to uh, continue the service to the customers, so the construction phase was divided into like, five, five phases. Uh, phase one was completed in September of 2015 and phase two is scheduled to complete by fall of this year. Overall project uh, is scheduled <coughs> to complete by winter 2020. So I'll uh, go in a little bit more details on the phases of the project, what happened in each phase. So phase one was mostly mobilization and uh, preparing the ground for building these facilities. Uh, phase two, we are uh, uh, building the facilities on the available ground. Uh, so name a few names, uh, water uh, flow control and metering facility, ozone contactor, flash mix system, flatulation sedimentation basin, and wash water recovery facility. Phase three, uh, we will be demolishing the existing clarifier. I'll show you the picture in a few. So this is the activities that's, that are going on during phase two. <coughs> this, as you see, this was this was the available ground we had in the plant. This is all existing plant that's uh, serving serving the customers. So this is uh, uh, this is our wash water clarification facility. This is the ozone contactor building. Uh, and this is the flock site basin and flash mix uh, facility. So this is all going going on at this time under phase two. So phase three is, as you see here, uh, we will be demolishing the clarifiers that are now in operation. And then this treated water in this area from here will be going to the filters and uh, it will be going out, out uh, to the customers. So then comes filter, uh, phase four. So the area that we cleared up in phase three, demolishing the, the clarifier, we will, we will put <coughs> other processes in the plant. For example, we will put the new filter, we will put the liquid oxygen, ox ozone generation building, chlorine contact basin, and CO2 storage. Uh, so this, this is how it will look like when phase four is completed. So we will have new filters, we have new chlorine contact basin, we have a new ozone building and chemical uh, system installed. Then we are going into our last phase of the project, phase five. And in phase five, uh, we will demolish the existing filters, uh, wash, existing wash water recovery facilities. Uh, we will have new hypochloride chlor and chlor uh, fluoridation process included. And we will have a new uh, strong water bioretention basin built in. Uh, uh, show, show the picture here. So, so existing filters are here. They will be demolished, and this area will be used for uh, for the maintenance purposes. This is a new chemical facility for hypochlorite and fluoridation, and this is the. This area is currently used as a staging area that will be turned back into bioretention basin once the project is complete. <coughs> so this will this is a rendering of the completed project. Uh, so we will have all new landscape all around the uh, plant, and we will have all the new structures. Uh, this is a rendering for the lower 
gate on the more avenue, the lower entrance. So we will improve that landscaping around here and we'll have a new gate that will be aesthetically pleasing. So for traffic and uh, traffic monitoring and control, this is a truck route. Uh, the trucks gate, they have two uh, uh, roads. They can either come on Camden or Lark from 17, they go on Winchester, follow the Knoll, Spoiler, and Moore Avenue into this plant. We do count all the trucks every day, and this, this graph kind of shows uh, the truck, truck traffic for the last three months since we had the last meeting. Uh, it's hard to read this number. It's hard to kind of read this number, but this is 50. So on the peak days, we only have one day when we had more than 50 trucks coming to the plant. Most of the time, we have between 20 and 30 trucks, and some of the days there was no truck traffic to the plant. So there are other projects in the area that that you may see the trucks coming back and forth. So I mean, let's look a few of those roads, uh, uh, drive, housing uh, complex. They are they are into the construction right now with 12 to 18 month construction. And we have the, on Winchester Boulevard we have Netflix. Uh, they are building the, they are completing the second building in March of 2017. And we thought bridge project is coming up next spring, and construction will go on for eight months. In the last meeting, we noted that we uh, the contractor requested uh, expanding the working hours on on site working hours, and we gave them you know, on a trial basis. So uh, the the contractors working hours were increased from uh, increased to seven, start at seven and end at six. So we had a couple of issues that we addressed, but there was no major issues. And following that contractor requested if we can have them uh, give the option to bring the trucks at the same time and uh, to match the working hours. And if one yeah. clarification on the current trucking hours. Yes. Um, that's supposed to be a.m. So it's 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Yes. The, oh, first, yes. the first 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. is the hours of work. Right. Uh, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. is when you actually have deliveries arriving at site. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so, so then these are the trucking hours uh, we had, and we went through extensive study uh, on the traffic. We had a traffic consultant do the traffic analysis. Our environmental planner did uh, all the uh, uh, calculations and stuff, and then we were able to uh, get the approval for increasing the truck hours from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m that we will be implementing on a trial basis and see how it goes. And so it's not like a permanent change. At this point, we're going to go in a trial mode. If everything works out, it may extend throughout the project. Question? Yes. The new trucking hours, is that the times that you're actually rolling the trucks at 7 a.m.? Yes. OK. Just a little concern. There's a lot of kids that go down more Avenue and go to that Rolling Hill school. Yes, sir. So, so, so we did the study at the uh, Pollard and Moore Avenue section, and that was considered in the study. So we've been in contact with uh, Rolling Hills throughout the process. Um, in fact, the, we do have a CEQA exception, which allows us to roll the trucks early on certain occasions when we're pointing concrete. Um, so we, we contact them each time uh, previously, and they said they had no issues with it. So the main point for us is going to be keeping in contact with them if earlier hours indicate that there is any sort of concern for students, uh, we'll roll those back. Uh, this is, as I'm deep said, on a trial basis to see if we can allow the contractor to work a little extra, so maybe he finishes a little sooner. Thank you. The original hours were, in fact, of today's security strong. Trucks are coming both ways. Correct. Um, I'm deep, do you know if they're going to go up and down more and Pollard? Yes. Yeah. It looks like so that's, that's, that's our, that's our dedicated work. Right now, trucks go down for that, and they come up for that. Mike, do you know where our crew is? Well, the, the truck traffic going down Granada is so those trucks can loop into the plant and come out the upper gate 
So there's, there shouldn't be too much traffic coming up Granada. I'm seeing more traffic coming up Granada. That's why I asked the question. Yeah. Because yes, well, right, we're, we're always coming in the back, coming around, getting around more. But now I see trucks coming from the Granada Gate up Granada and, and dumping on it uh, more. Yeah, yeah. That's, um, that surprises me a little bit. We'll have to check into that. We have our construction manager on the side, uh, from the site here, uh, Roger Hatton, uh, and, uh, as well as a representative from our contractor. We'll take a look and see what the pattern is. Uh, our understanding was that it was supposed to be, as you said, one way only. That's where you started. Yeah, so we'll take a look and get some we'll clarification on what that was. So, uh, next we're going to uh, update on contractors' activities and we have a short video. Uh, showing the areas of construction. And so we divided this whole construction into a small section we call the area. For example, the area one is a uh, raw water control pump and breathing facility. So this is the area. This is the progress we have made in the last three months. So, so this is area two. It's coming up as a ozone contractor. This is in November, and you see the progress each month for December through January. So we are making more progress on the project, building these structures. Our area 6 is block set basin, this area here. This is a picture from November, as you see progress, shows the progress on the, on the structure. We have made with this wash water recovery facility. So this is in December and coming up in January. So we made some good progress in this area building this concrete structure. <coughs> so area 13 is this electrical pad. Since we didn't have much space, so we had to build this pad to install all the electrical switch gear in the backup generator. So this is the progress shown in the last three months. And as of yesterday, they were actually installing the switch gear on this pad. So this was the update on the construction activities. A large, a large new building that is control of property. <coughs> more. Is that cap now? And does it go any higher than where you see it now? The, the block side basins are at the finished height. The ozone contactor, which is the bigger structure, it's about six feet behind the flock head basins. It said it's finished height, but the uh, handrail or the top, it will, with the handrail, it will appear a little bit taller, but it's at its height right now. So in the phase two, we have our remaining items. As you have seen, there is a lot of progress made in phase two. So all the structure will be completed and the project is placed in frozen contractor wash or recovery. We have large diameter pipes that are being installed, fuel left, uh, electrical equipment pad, uh, the area 13 that we showed, uh, it, it's almost there. Uh, and most, and we are not expecting any significant uh, truck traffic increase in the next quarter. So. The, the chart that I showed previously, that will remain about the same for the next quarter. So with that, uh, we, oh, yes. It's uh, hard not to notice that you've got a couple of acres of tanks over here just to the south of this parking lot. Has any consideration been given to putting PV solar panels on that for uh, power? Yes. That, uh, you, you can address that. You were kind of <laughs> <laughs> so we had we had that study done uh, before this project, and the plan is to uh, reevaluate that study once this project is done because we had a good size space available our uh, in Canada reservoir and even the uh, uh, the site. This area. 
So this was under consideration for solar panels. So, but due to we are using these areas for construction activity, staging area. So once this project is complete, we will evaluate that option and definitely will have whatever makes sense. Yeah. So this was yeah, there, yeah. right. So that was part of the study, and we have a potential to uh, generate about 800 kW. Um, just on that um, reservoir. So we, we will reevaluate and we'll have a bigger project uh, putting the pa solar panel wherever it's feasible. Thank you. So with that, I believe we are uh, ready to go to the construction site to speak to each other, our plant supervisors. So okay, well, again, welcome everybody. Uh, we're going to be going outside. It's a very short little round walk. Uh, the stairs. So we also have an elevator. Anybody in the